that year to the most wins in Baylor history. Finished 29 and two. And for Texas, their head coach, of course, is Jared Elliott. His 23rd season, USA Volleyball Hall of Fame in 2023. We take a look at Texas's starting lineup. Uh, Ellis Wendell is doing a phenomenal job. The freshman setter dishing it out at 6-3. She's a lot to handle because she can be offensive minded and she's gotten better as the season has went on. Well, we talk about the keys to the game for Texas. They were telling us last night and again today serve and pass manage their game and slow down Baylor's go gap. Explain that. I'll talk about it as soon as I see a go gap because Baylor is very good at it and it's because they're able to run it because of their ability to pass and right out of the gate the player that we talked about Elise McGee that's the Big 12 offensive player of the week at 6-4 She's a lot to handle on that outside pin. I like what the team calls her. They either call her the unit or elite McGee. And here is Lauren <laughs> Briseño, the server. L. Bean, the junior out of San Antonio, Texas. Played at Cornerstone in San Antonio. Nice dig by Halter. Baylor trying to keep it alive. Well, two plays in, and it's been Elise McGee to impact the play. First with the kill in that time, getting involved in the block at the plane of the net. And Baylor wants to jump out quickly. They're coming off straight set win over UCF. They swept UCF over the weekend. They were impressive on Sunday, 3-0. Nice little touch. Texas keeps it alive. Brezeno. Big attack by Manuel Benbinbe. Benbinbe up available. And that's a fast tempo offense that Baylor wants to try to settle into, get their middles involved, because that'll open up things for their pins. And a good pickup and a, a quick little break in the action for Jared Elliott. I think we're going to have a challenge perhaps on this play. When we talk about Ben Binbe, she is the junior out of Cameroon, spent some time at a junior college, Missouri State West Plains. She was a junior college All-American, but she's number one in hit percentage for Baylor, and she's number three in hit percentage in the Big 12. Take a look at this again. I thought it was in live. Yeah, I think that gets in. That's funny, you and I were talking earlier today about, you know, tennis using the cameras and all that technology and whether volleyball should go in where you can see definitively whether something's in or out. Here's the thing. I, I love that the game of volleyball has implemented the challenge system. I thought it was right. something that was lacking for a number of years. And so I'm just grateful that they have the, the challenge option. Now, can the technology get better? Certainly. And, and that is to come. So Ryan McGuire has done a great job this season. He loves this team. It's going to go to Baylor. Let's talk about Baylor's keys to the game because Coach McGuire was telling us last night, number one was no fluff. Yeah, I can't fluff. say I've ever heard that as a key. <laughs> You know, and when he means the fluff, it's like they want to be terminal with their attack. They have an option one, but they also have to have an outlet. And he said, you know, we've been really good with serve and pass, but we have to be able to put away the ball and limit the errors on our side. So eliminate some of that fluff. That's the way Texas gets right back in it. A big attack from Molly Phillips, the senior out of Mansfield, Texas. And I think the challenge, I think Jared Elliott knew that ball was in, but I think it was just a little mini break, a little timeout, because that's Texas's first point on the board. A much needed side out. Emma Halter, pretty good serves. The other attack, the left-hander, Allie Check, the sophomore from Sugarland, Texas. And Allie Check has the ability to be the X factor for the Baylor Bears. Look at this southpaw coming in. And she's a lot to handle there on that right side. Kelly check big left-handed tall on that right side Nice little touch And that is long well, That was a missed opportunity at the plane of the net trying to find the deep floor you Could see where she found saw the opening just couldn't execute and find that that back line Baylor leading by two Kayla Akana, the junior out of Hawaii, the transfer from Nebraska. Season high, 13 digs, last match versus TCU. The big attack. Judgment call. Maddie Skinner tried to make the call on that. And it'll be Baylor's point. They lead it 5-2. 
And so far out of the gate, the Bears have been in system. Able to execute a first ball side out. Here is Elise McGee. Very efficient. Leads and kills in points. That is an error. Uh, she's going to go after a heavy top spin jump serve and just misses that one. Couldn't get the rotation, the snap on the wrist. And you talk to the coaches about her serving. They say it's high risk and high reward. <laughs> That's kind. Now a little opportunity here for Maddie Skinner, the junior out of Katy, Texas. Three-time All-American, preseason player of the year in the Big 12. How about that strength by Manu Binbe? Binbe met her today earlier, had a chance to talk to her even last night. She plays with a childlike love. Nice dig by Halter. And it goes to Baylor. Leading 6-3, make it 7-3. Putting pressure from the service line as well. So it's been the serve and pass aspect already positive side for, for the Baylor Bears as they're settling into this first set. As mentioned, Baylor's won five in a row. Four and four away. Service ace. Texas coming out a little bit flat. You and I were here a couple of weeks ago when they started out flat against BYU. They came back, started out a little bit flat against TCU, and tonight again, a little flat here in the early going. I'm looking to try to settle into this first set, but they have been a team and yet another ace back-to-back -back from the Bears. And the Bears, they're young, as you mentioned, not a senior on this squad, but they're playing free right now. You know, they have everything to gain. Texas trying to stay in the top of the Big 12, but a huge opportunity. The Bears putting all the pressure right now. 4-0 run right now for the Bears of Baylor. Baylor playing free and easy. The attack. The set. This time, the attack by Riley Simpson. No, she tries to touch it. That'll be off to the side. Texas will get the point. Texas has never lost to Baylor on their home floor. 48-0 and 0 to be exact. Baylor wants to change that. And here is Asia O'Neill, preseason Big 12 Player of the Year. What an outstanding career she has had. Nice move by Ella Swindle, the freshman out of Columbia, Missouri, again playing in front of her grandparents who've made their way down from Columbia. And Ella Swindle at 6-3 with that big left call, knowing when to use that center attack. She's running a 5-1 system, so she's a live attacker on the front row for Texas right now. Texas only the hitting percentage at 125 here in the early going. Baylor making a substitution as Allie Check will come back into the lineup. Tehani Ulafatu will check out. Baylor has led the entire way. 5-0. The last six points. The big attack, that's long. Baylor another point, 11-5. And Emma Holter is pleading with her <laughs> the coaching staff to try to challenge that. She thought she saw a touch. I actually saw, thought I saw one, too. The and challenge is not going to be called, and play goes on. Point to Baylor. Baylor coming off those wins against UCF. They did not play rush. They played clean the entire two days. Nice block. Little combination block. Bella Bergmark, Bergmark coming up with a foul. And watch Bergmark's move here and the press and the hang in the air, just sealing that net. That's Bergmark's 72nd block of the season, first for Texas tonight. And another block. And it was the first time that Avery Carlson wasn't exactly at the net, a little all pushed off with that primary pass. So with the pressure came from the Ellis Wendell serve. Amali Phillips was involved in that block, the senior out of Mansfield, Texas. 
Texas out a little bit of a mini run right now. Skinner makes the save. The attack. Nice job, Baylor keeping it alive. Well, Versenio with a beautiful set from her platform. They were out here early on the court working on that secondary set. And then a huge rip. Well, Coach McGuire called Brasenio a leader of this team. Was a walkout. She's got a great story we'll tell you about a little bit later and how she found out she was being put on scholarship. Nice dig by Halter. Texas will set it up again. Baylor doing a good job at the net so far. This time, Phillips, the big shot. And Texas to try to find their footing. They're winning some of these longer extended rallies, and that'll get some momentum on your side as you're trying to clean up first contacts, and that's Molly Phillips, the veteran, finding that high seam deep into the floor. Well, you look at the last two games, and Molly Phillips' hitting percentage has increased. That'll be Texas's point. McGee did a nice job trying to keep it alive, but Texas will have it. And they're saying four contacts. They're saying that it crossed the plane of the net or didn't get the hands of the Texas block. So point over to the Longhorns and just inching their way back into this first set. And here is Carissa Barnes, the redshirt senior out of Weatherford, Texas. Texas A&M Corpus Christi transfer. Nice job by Texas keeping it alive. Swindle finally gets it over. Big hit, McGee, that'll go up into the stands, point Baylor. And that's a fast, simple ball to the outside, Elise McGee at 6'4", gets on that in a hurry. And Baylor will serve, here is Briseño again. rotation are the Longhorns and so that's called early we've seen this more in the game of volleyball they officials have been forced this much more this season an area of emphasis and we've talked about that a couple of weeks ago the different emphasis that the officials are working with Richard Blue and Chad Clunk and usually I see a Making warning though yeah. before before that's actually called for for a point Oh, that is a heads-up play. Just finding that open space. And you're starting to see Texas getting the rhythm. A beautiful pass from Skinner. That just a tip right over finds the opening. Well, Texas is up their hitting percentage to 133 right now. Baylor at 105. Nice job by Barnes. Skinner, big shot. I love what the coach's staff was talking to us about last night. We touched on it in the open. She's seeing the game at a completely different level right now. And already one of the best pin players in the country. But for her to take her, her play up even another notch here, Elliot is super pleased with her play. Number two in the Big 12 in digs. And I was watching the reaction on that play on the Texas sideline. And it looked as though Jared Elliott was not pleased the way that play went. And it'll be Baylor's point and ball leading 15-11. There's a good shot at one of the great coaches in volleyball history, Jared Elliott. 575 wins coming into tonight here at Texas. 625 overall. McGee. Uh, it's a beautiful gather step from Elise McGee. I mean, that ball is about at the 10-foot line. And she just takes a nice little gather step, a one-two to get her feet underneath of her, get her feet set. Watch this little gather step. She didn't have a lot of approach at the ball, but that's that quick one-two and then up strong. Came in with 235 kills coming into this. That's going to be it. Oh, go ahead and paint a line there, Madison. Yeah. And Brasenio just thought that that ball was going to go wide. I thought off the hand it was as well, but using every angle of the floor is Maddie Skinner. Here is Akana. Season high, 13 digs, last match versus TCU. The air, that hurts. 
One of the things that we spent a lot of time last night at Texas's practice, that is probably one of the most exciting practices. They practice like they play. You wouldn't have thought they had a match tonight. That, no, that, exactly. That's for sure, right? It was <laughs> highly contested, all out, beautiful volleyball, and it was intense. Right now, though, Baylor with the upper hand and have had it the entire set so far. Again, you go to Maddie Skinner. Number two in Big 12 points, Maddie Skinner. The senior out of Katy, Texas, started her career at Kentucky, won a national title there. And Jared Elliott says that she's just playing even smarter and seeing the seeing the game even better. The veteran won a national championship at Kentucky and then last year here at Texas. Texas tried to get the big point, weren't able to do it. Jenna Winnis looked like she had a pretty good attack. Great job, though, by the Bears. Vivende was a big part of that, and they were able to point score. She had a couple aces when she went back the first time, see if she can produce from the serverless line once again. Vivende is six foot three, always with a smile on her face. Simpson, no. Texas can't make the save, and going hard in the stands is Akata. Tell you, you got to be impressed with Baylor right now, the way they're playing. Coaching staff telling us last night in practice for Baylor, it all starts with the serve. That time, Asia O'Neill. Asia O'Neill, a couple of blocks, gets the kill. Texas cuts the lead down to five. And another player for the Longhorns that could go back and really put pressure with her serve at the jump float. Yeah, sneaks in. Does get the Bears out of system. Simpson, no. Set it up. The attack. Jenna Winnis. You look at her, long arms comes to mind. Jenna Winnis, the transfer in from University of Minnesota, a recruit that Jared Elliott wanted out of high school. Decided to go up to, to Minnesota and then transferred back closer to home. That goes up in the rafters, almost hits one of the banners. Skinner, nice dig. Winnis again. Texas keeps it alive. Swindle with the set. Skinner. Quick shot by Swindle. Simpson, no. Longest rally we have had tonight so far. That's going to be Texas's point. Wenis has stepped up so far. And with extended rallies, it's been the Longhorns. Kind of battle through this. This is high level volleyball happening. Some good coverage throughout. And then Jenna Wenis gathers and goes high hands. Jenna Wenis was huge versus TCU. Seven of her 10 kills were in the fourth and fifth set. Simpson, nice shot. Riley Simpson out of Colorado Springs. They call her red. Talk about a player that has had a great deal of patience. Didn't play a whole lot last year in the beginning of this season, but coach is telling us she stayed the course. I talked about how just tremendous her attitude has been. Just the positivity exudes from her and plays with such joy as well. I was kidding her last night at practice because the post-game interview after Sunday's match, I think it was, against UCF, she was so exuberant and bubbly, <laughs> but it was natural. And I told her, I said, I like seeing that. That was fun to watch. Halter had to get it across. It was a breakdown in, in, in service reception for Texas and then a clean pickup from the Bears running that fast tempo offense. 
Again, once again, establishing their middles early on, and Baylor with a five-point lead. Baylor number three in the conference in assists, number two in kills per set, but number 11 in blocks. And right now, the Bears are doing an outstanding job leading by five here in the first set. And we talked about Elise McGee, the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, and it. she has came up big so far, and it was early. 21-18, Swindle will serve. Nice job at the net by Texas. Bergmark making her presence felt. That time, Halter could not get the dig. I think it was a great adjustment from Ali Cech. She had just aired on the play before, but if she just adjusts a bit, takes a little bit off and finds that soft spot on the back row. It's difficult for a lefty two on that, that left pin because you got to let that ball cross your shoulder, wait a little bit longer. Here is Alexis DaCosta, the sophomore out of Katy, Texas. Crescenio doing a great job with the digs tonight, as is Halter. McGee, Texas kept it alive. Halter gets it over. Great hustle. That time, McGee, it is long. A tremendous fight again, an extended rally. And Texas is able to win on a, on an attack error. That one just she couldn't get a full snap on it, just didn't snap the wrist. You know, that's what we were talking to Coach Elliott about last night. That his Texas team, they have a lot of fight when they get down. You and I saw that firsthand after losing that first set to BYU and then coming alive. McGee, no. McGee will try it again. A one-two combination for the block. Third block of the set for the Longhorns. And Texas has gotten everybody's best shot, right? I mean, right. It's, it's been a road show for them. They've set attendance records everywhere they go, but they have to, you know, they look forward to the, the friendly confines here of Gregory Gym and all oh, the adjustment from Elise McGee. She had just aired, she just went long, and then she shades that ball towards the line. We haven't seen that out of her yet in this set. What a tremendous adjustment. Yeah, I'm talking to the coaching staff last night. I said, what's making McGee so good? They said, she's in good rhythm when she hits. We saw it there. Didn't go for the big one. Took a little bit off it. It got uh, Texas back on their heels. Two points away from winning the opening set for Baylor. That would be big for them. Presenio called everybody off, said, I got it. Great job again by <laughs> Baylor. Ali check. Deep into the floor, cross court, listening to her coaching staff, kind of gives them a heads up like, hey, nice way to communicate with me. I can hear you. How about Ali Check in the UCF series? No errors, 17 swings. Swindle, Skinner. Keeps Texas in it. Baylor was set point, gave up one, and it's 24-21. And here is Emma Halter, one of the great personalities I've been around this year in any sport. Fun to talk to. And that's going to do it. What a job by Baylor in the opening set. is on point. They had three aces, and that was critical early on in that set one, and then they start to believe. This is a very young squad. They do not have a senior on their team. So if you give them some confidence, they're rolling. Look at the smiles. Look at the joy. And Ryan McGuire says, he goes, hey, this team, we have to love loud. And mm -hmm. that, that is a theme yep. for them, that we want to love loud. We want to look each other in the eye, have that type of culture on their side, that positivity. I always enjoy my conversation with Coach McGuire and, and just how he approaches it. And, and we had a great conversation with him yesterday afternoon. But you know, talk about Texas not having an ace. 
Baylor held UCF only one ace in their matchup. Now let's see if Texas gets going. We saw them lose the opening set against BYU a couple of weeks ago here in Gregory Gym. Then we saw them come alive in the second and third and fourth. They looked like a different team after yeah. that first set. I mean, they just locked down and they were so focused throughout the remainder. That time McGee a little bit long. McGee had an outstanding opening set. McGee with five kills in that opening set. Allie Check also with five kills for Baylor. McGee's got to get it over and does. Swindle. Skinner. How, what kind of ability does it take to say, I don't need to hit it that hard? And to take a quick look and find out where that gap will and, be. And that's what Coach Elliott is talking about, how well she's seeing it. But it's sometimes you see outside hitters go over the top, shading towards line. That time, she it's, a, it's an opening in the middle of the floor in that soft opening. So it's just moving that ball and then the block from Texas once again. Combination of O'Neal and Phillips on the rejection. Watch the press, the timing in unison, but sealing that net. Fourth block for Texas so far tonight. Only one for Baylor. Nice job covering up. Skinner, no. Left-handed attack. Phillips keeps it alive. Swindle sets it up. Skinner looks for an opening. Almost found it. Baylor kept it alive with check. Nice job right at the net. Allie Andrews, the redshirt sophomore out of Richfield, Washington, was in on that. And bunch block there, quick off of her feet is Elise McGee. Pushing that ball, not getting used, getting that left hip sealed, and that left hand as well, pushing it back into the floor. Love the job that Alicia, they call her Allie Andrews, did against UCF. Hit 545, no errors, and seven blocks. What a pickup on the back row. And high up the hands. Tremendous court defense from the Bears. Extending the rally. A dig to transition kill for the Bears. And to keep that. And then the secondary set. Oh, that is a pretty ball. The lead behind from Avery Carlson. Crescenio to serve. Swindle. Just getting it over is Phillips. And Texas ups their lead to five to two. How important is it now for Baylor? It's early. I get that. You win the first set, but now to maintain your composure and don't allow Texas to get these 6,000, 7,000 people back into this match. I will say the fans were pretty quiet and late, you know, to end that first set. And then an error by Texas. Baylor cuts the lead down to two. Olafatu will come back into the lineup and she will serve just a freshman out of San Francisco. She's been impressive in practice over the last couple of weeks. O'Neal, tough to stop. We're seeing Texas more often in system, a perfect pass up from Emma Halter, and then off one foot. Not many better than Asia O'Neill. For the last six matches, O'Neill has hit better than 500. Coach is telling us yesterday she's getting more and more comfortable. Start of the year with that ankle injury. And Texas had a loss on the, uh, the for right out of the gate to Long Beach State, but they didn't have Asia O'Neill. They had to move then some pieces around. You know, Texas dropped two other matches, though, and people were wondering, like, what's going right. on with Texas, right? Well, <laughs> they're not getting a lot of the limelight right now. And so I think they're kind of enjoying that, though. The defending national champions may be under the radar, but they have all the pieces needed to try to defend their title. They haven't given up hope on that. Still a lot of volleyball left. Swindle. 
That'll be Baylor's point. Texas coming in 14 and three, as we mentioned, nine and zero in the Big 12, won nine straight, seven and two here at home. They only lost at home to Stanford and Washington State. And coach is talking about that Washington State loss might come back to haunt them. To haunt them. Yeah, I mean, they're three of the RPI right now is Texas. You know, the top four teams host, and so you're fighting for that. But it could come down to Texas, Louisville, Washington State, those three, those three teams. It's still a lot to be, be a decided. Lot to be, right. And there's and, so many key matches coming up. And first things first, right? I mean, take take, take care of here now. Uh, so to Jared Elliott, he's like, hey, most important match is right now against the Baylor yeah. Bears. Baylor had a 3-0 scoring run, have tied it up at six. McGee to serve, heavy serve. There's that high risk, high reward. Yeah. Simpson, no, they kept it alive. Texas half the net with a block. Wettis doing a great job. Kept Texas in it in that opening set. Now comes up with the rejection. Texas regaining the lead. That is a huge hit by Bibinbe. If you take a look at that replay, though, Avery Carlson didn't even have to move his step. Watch this. I mean, exactly where she was set up. That is an in-system. When we say in-system pass, that's a great example of in-system. Every The two options she had available were available. How about the dig on the back row from Bibinbe? After Skinner with the big attack. Simpson. That'll be in. <laughs> and a lot of love for the middle blocker as she just sat in and dug a ball. Hugs all around. Riley Simpson, they call her red. Double digit kills for Simpson in five of the last six matches. He been bay. Simpson again. Counted again. So Simpson the last time went more towards the middle of the floor. So what does she do? She changes it just enough to get more to stay more towards the line. It's so not going into the block, going around the block and high and deep into the floor. Be Bin Bay doing another outstanding job tonight for Baylor. It's been her serve. Yeah. Or the Bears have been able to point score. That time it just got away from Texas and Baylor increases their lead. Up now by three. Another 3-0 scoring run, and a timeout is going to be called. We'll step aside. We're at Gregory Gym in Austin, Texas. Baylor won the first. They love, there's no telling who's going to show up. How about one of the great golfers ever, Sergio Garcia? And just the, the sport of volleyball is growing so much, and the, and the fans are noticing Sergio Garcia in the house and Gregory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a prediction that he didn't play today in Austin, Texas, unless you were a frog <laughs> or had a scuba gear. So much tonight. rain. So much rain today. And a tornado warning at our hotel. Made it interesting. Simpson, no. Simpson again. They decided to let it go. Emma Halter let it go. And it'll be Baylor's point, and they up their lead. To four now on a 5 0 scoring run. Well, you're living deep third. If you're an attacker, you're living well. I mean, that's deep right. into the floor. She's moving the ball all around. And yeah, that'll be an air. You know, talking to the coaching staff last, we don't mean to make light of it, but when Bibenbe makes a mistake, she feels awful. I mean, she goes and apologizes to the coach, you know, and but she can still smile, and that's what we love about her. Ryan McGuire said, he goes, you know, I just wanted her to, to press more with her trailing hand. And he's like, I'm sorry I let all of weight go down. And he's like, no, I just, <laughs> just one little thing. You're okay. <laughs> that, that was a great story. This time, Swindle can't dig it out. And Baylor increasing their lead here in the second. And I can just recall one time, I think, that Baylor has been out of system, where they haven't had all three options available. So give credit to their service reception core. And again, Texas, 204 and 14 at home in the last 14 seasons. 
109 and 1 in league play in the last 14 seasons. But they're keeping Baylor in it. And Block got involved too early. You can't go over and impede with that setter on that second contact. So point over to Texas. Texas number one in Big 12 in points, number four in hitting percentage, first in blocks, number two in service aces. That's an error. And the lead is at four. Skinner can't get it to go. Baylor increases their lead. It, it's like Texas is a quarter of a step behind. Not a half a step, but they're close, but... Just some uncharacteristic yeah. errors on the side of Texas, too. Some attacking errors. Baylor on the attack. Nice job, Halter, again. Skinner, this time it goes. Yeah, that time in rhythm. The last set was a bit tight for Matty Skinner, and that one perfectly in rhythm. And a tremendous dig that started off from Emma Halter holding the back row down. She's going to go back to serve for the Longhorns. Matty Skinner, six ki or Skinner, six kills, I should say, today. Swindle with the set. Skinner. Takes a little bit off it again. Texas cuts the lead to three. Halter out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Skinner. Wouldn't expect anything else. But there was a rare bad, you know, bad pass from the Bears. As I mentioned, I thought I had one other make that now two, but Texas at the point of the net ready. And now the fans are starting to really get into it inside of Gregory. Nice pull back at the last second. Oh, there, we, no, there was a touch on that. I think point is to Texas. I, think, I thought I saw. Yeah, I think it was too. DaCosta tried to pull back, but you could see the ball made a move. Here it is again. Watch. So Texas had it. Swindle. Halter. Briseño again the dig. Texas can't get it. And that's one of those where Skinner is coming in to pick up that tip, and Asia O'Neill just sticks out her left hand. And here is Briseño. Played for Team USA, under 21. The Pan Am Games won a gold. Really helped her game. That's in there, though. Akana will come back into the lineup for Texas. Akana, dad played hoops at BYU Hawaii. Mom and sister both played volleyball at Hawaii. Small mistake by Avery Carlson, who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Oh, that was a difficult ball to handle. Not much she could do there. And the Texas serve, putting some more pressure. And now we're all knotted up at 15 apiece in set number two. We talk about Lauren Briseño out of San Antonio, Texas. Match already, and I do think she gained so much confidence this summer playing for the collegiate national team. Because McGuire says she is a calming voice, an accurate server, so good on that with her with her platform. And if you want to see that video again, by the way, it's going viral on YouTube. You can just punch it in, you'll be able to see it. Takata to serve. Tied at 15 in the second set. Wow. 
Halter did that out of self-protection, I think. And I thought that was a, a smart timeout, and Coach McGuire happy with how his team responded out of that. They're able to run that quick tempo ball in the middle. Coach McGuire says he loves this team. No drama on this team. Skinner. McGee. Swindle to Skinner. Out it. Texas ties it back up. It's just in complete control. Moving the ball around anywhere she wants is Maddie Skinner. We've seen a multitude of shots, so much range. And you think, okay, she's on the front row, now she goes to the back row, we can take a, you know, right. a relief? No, she's actually even better from the back row attack. Texas has the advantage. Skinner to serve. Again, the power of Manu Bibimbe, originally out of Cameroon. And when they found out that Stowers was going to miss some time, the coaching staff challenged a number of players. We talked about McGee and Simpson, but Bibimbe was another player they challenged, said she's got to step up, and she has. <laughs> McGee long on the serve. Texas by one. O'Neill to serve. Swindle. Almost hits the roof. Baylor, nice job keeping it alive. Briseño to Simpson. Swindle. Count the point. Jenna Wenis was big in the opening set. She's big here in the second. And the as it's been all night long in Gregory. This crowd oh, is coming yeah. alive. Simpson blocked. O'Neal, nice job. But even better job by Bibimbe. This has been one of the best rotations for the Bears. As Bibimbe goes back and then a quick just heads up play. Bibimbe's full name, Ruth Manuela Marie. Skinner almost got him. Simpson. That is in. Riley Simpson coming up with a big shot. The essence of patience. Riley Simpson waiting her time. Now making the most out of it. Tied again at 19. When Bibimbe has served, Baylor has been successful, it seems, tonight. In the clutch, Wenis. One of the quietest players on the team. Action speaks loud. Swindle's got to make sure that the kicks are all tightened up. Again, playing before her grandparents again, who make the trip from Columbia, Missouri. Her grandfather, Skip Crossnickel, was a football player at Missouri and a member of their Hall of Fame. 
Point, Texas. Texas with four aces in the second set so far. And that's been the difference for the Longhorns. They bump it down with serve and pass. And what a timely ace from the freshman, Ellis Wendell. A low flat floater. And again, no aces for Texas in that opening set. They've got four tonight. They lead it by two. Tomorrow on Fox, it starts. It's the Fall Classic beginning. Corbin Carroll leads the D-backs in their fight for the ground. While Adolis Garcia and the Rangers look for their first title in franchise history. Coverage of Game 1 of the World Series begins tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. On Fox from Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. I'll tell you, tech, I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area. The place is ballistic over the Rangers. But what makes this special as a baseball fan, a couple of years ago, both these teams lost over 100, 100 games. games. Yeah. You know? And the job that both managers did, and I tip my hat to Bruce Bochy of, of Texas. A year ago, he's sitting on his couch watching the World Series. Unbelievable. That'll begin tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. It's going to be a dandy. And by the way, for you Ranger fans, probably not Houston fans, but coming up after our match with Baylor in Texas, FS1 is going to replay game two of the 2023 American League Championship Series with the Rangers and the Astros. Once again, that'll be game two. Texas, of course, winning the first two on the road, winning, losing three at home, and then coming back to win two down in Houston to advance to the World Series. So that'll be coming up following us. Let's talk about this match. The difference, what has Texas done in set two they didn't do in set one? I think you said it, four aces in the set number two, and that is the difference right now for Texas as they're down set, one set to none, and coming back. They're focused from the service line, and Jared Elliott does think that this is one of his better serving teams mm -hmm. that he's had. Briseño, Simpson, when it's blocked, Briseño doing a nice job, Simpson, nothing Halter could do. We've seen Handling. a range of shots from Simpson just going different angles, that time sharp angle. And that's the key to success for an outside hitter. You're going to get the lion's share of attempts, but you've got to be able to move it, the ball around, be able to score in a multitude of ways. Wenis again. What a job she has done so far tonight. She's got a couple of blocks. She's got four kills. 20 swings, only three airs. Good job at the net again by the Longhorns. Simpson rejected. Simpson has to get it over and does. Molly Phillips. Oh, no, they're going to call it. Yeah, yeah let's it, it looked like it. It looked like it was in her hand a long time. Look at it again. It's more of it's behind your head, and you can't, it's not in front of your hand contact. And this is another point of emphasis for mm -hmm. the officiating crew this year. Texas fans obviously don't like it. Jared Elliott, the head coach of Texas, doesn't like it. Ryan McGuire will take it. Look at it again. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. I think it was in her hand. I think it was behind her head. And <laughs> you know, it's, it depends on the lens of which you see the game through, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> you have a burnt orange look <laughs> or a green look. Bottom line is Baylor cuts the lead to one here in the second set after winning the first set. Skinner. And 
and we're tied again. Well, Coach Ryan McGuire said he needs his block to show up, and that was a, such a huge timely block for the Bears. It's the third team block, but that was critical. Now, Coach McGuire knew that UT is a long team, and as you mentioned, they needed blocking, and they're getting it so far tonight. Second block of the set for Baylor. Chance to take the lead. Hitter, oh boy, how big was that? It's just out of system. I mean, that was a broken play from the get-go off first contact. But the composure, Maddie Skinner, look at the secondary set, just gathers and then takes a rip at it. <laughs> Alter to serve. And an error. That hurts when you have a big play and you come back. And you have a service here. Tied at 23. Briseño to serve. Setting it up for Skinner, and she is rejected. Bibimbe at the net. I think that was Ali Check. <laughs> that was a lot of Ali Check. And a timeout's going to be called as Baylor one point away from winning their second set. And the crowd not happy. They thought they had a lift within that rally. Jared Elliott, you know, the warrior integrity, leadership, de devotion, too, that they, the theme of the year. Briseño to serve for the set. Skinner tries to keep it alive. Ooh. Baylor does. And Texas is alive. Ninth tie in this set. Tied at 24. I expect a line to line serve from Akana trying to go to that zone five. We'll see where she goes. And she does, straight down the line. Nice job, Halter. Skitter. Texas gets the point. And now the Longhorns with a chance to even things up. But Paler comes right back. Tied at 25 again. Tenth tie in this set. And that's Allie Check. She had five kills in the first set. Just her first here in the second set. Ulufatu to serve. Skinner. Is in <laughs> the aggressive swing, but you have to give credit to the secondary set for Brasino. Brasino doing an outstanding job tonight. It's the little plays like that that make a huge difference. You leave your attacker with a ball that's hittable. Baylor one point away from winning, but Skinner knocks it up again. I mean, just a player that takes your team on her back constantly. And as I mentioned, in the open, a player that just seems to get better with more pressure on her plate. Skinner, 12 kills in this set. None bigger than the last one, and now she will serve. At 12 in the match. Just continuing to add to her totals.
Dennis. Well, McGee is not happy with herself. Texas now with the advantage and a chance to win the second. to make up for it. Wettis off the hands of Baylor. They keep it alive. McGee again. The defense. Wow. I mean, into the bleachers. The Bears are fly fighting and clawing their way. Definitely not like a zoo bear. I mean, they're... they're yeah. <laughs> no, they're not a right? zoo bear tonight. How about Elise McGee, though, making that air and then coming back with that big shot. Now with a chance to take the elite lead with the serve. Wettis. O'Neal's been quiet so far tonight. Wettis. Simpson rejected. Oh, that's out. That's point. That's out. Yeah, point Baylor. A use up the, the tools the block, sees those hands and swipes. And now Baylor with a chance again. Set point. The third in this set. And Baylor has done it. A high risk, high reward. That we is. Talk about her serve, and then she did just that. Elise McGee once again impacted the game. And the Baylor Bears up two sets to none here in Gregory. In the past 14 seasons, Texas had lost only one set in league play. They've lost two tonight. Baylor wins it 28-27. They lead two sets to none. Can the Longhorns come back? Third set coming up on the other side of the break here on FS1. The last time Baylor took the first two sets from UT home or road was back on November 5th, 2020 in Austin, Texas. They've done it tonight. And a lot because of the play of Manu Bibinbe. She has been outstanding. Impacting the game. She had two kills in that first set, but two aces that really helped propel Baylor to that first set victory. They're able to point score and then offensively just coming alive, swiping the hands, getting available. Watch just how hard she works and drives at the ball. The backswing, she, cutting it either angle, finding the opening, and just the joy. I mean, exudes the joy and so much confidence right now on the side of the Baylor Bears, able to win that second set, extending that. 29-27, the two sets to none lead now for the Baylor Bears. How about Simpson? Seven kills in the second set for Baylor. What stands out, though, on the numbers? You know, I thought their block late in that second set propelled them. So in different sets, it's been different things. I thought serve and pass, they were superior in set number one. And then in set number two, they got huge blocks. They got in front of the Longhorn attackers when they needed to late. And they took aggressive swings. We saw late into that, it was Elise McGee with an aggressive, but also Simpson just moving the ball around, not going and challenging because Texas is a very physical team. She's able to hit around with a multitude of shots. Quick correction. The mouth was moving faster than the brain. I said 109 and one. That's matches, not sets. Yeah, so they, they've only what, lost one, well, one match. match. Still, it's pretty good. So we begin the third. Baylor leading 2-0, trying to extend their win streak to six in a row. And Baylor has had a tough schedule to start Big 12 play. They started out one and three. Then they've won five in a row, trying to make it six. They've overcome a lot. And again, Texas has dominated Baylor. But not tonight. Well, they shared the title in 2019. Baylor and Texas, and this is the last two times tonight and tomorrow night that these two teams will face in the Big 12 Conference. Well, look, DaCosta went low, couldn't get it up high enough. 
Texas strikes first here in the third. Halter with the serve. McGee. Skinner. Skinner is always moving when she's not involved. I mean, she made the play, and then she went back and found a place to stand. I mean, it's, it, watch her. She's, as a novice, I like watching her move, looking for the right place to be. Halter, Skinner. I'm just enjoying watching her move the ball it, it, wherever the opening is. I mean, it's just that ability to see the floor and then be able to execute on that. The roll shot she's found a number of times, the soft spot, the hole in the defense. But if, if they're playing up in the floor, she just moves it towards the line. It, it's, it's incredible to watch Maddie Skinner, one of the elite pin players in the country. Well, Maddie Skinner, double digit kills in 16 of 18 matches this season. She's got 14 tonight. Throw in eight digs, too. And Baylor comes fighting back as they have the entire night. Ali check with that, the southpaw, the communication with her setter, just talking about those little tiny little adjustments. Needed to get that connection. I, I like the set, the, the shot selection, as Coach Ryan McGuire says. You know, we have to have a you know attack where we want to mm -hmm. be terminal, but then an outlet if, if the set isn't perfect in rhythm. Skinner again. McGee. Skinner can't get it. Point Baylor. Once again, this is the tonight and tomorrow will be the last time these two teams meet as conference foes in the regular season. Baylor, the fourth toughest schedule nationally. They were picked third in the preseason poll behind UT and BYU. That's interesting, though. BYU actually was swept tonight at K State. Wow. So, you know, still some time left. We're midway through the Big 12 conference schedule. I think we're going to see a challenge here, the first challenge from Ryan McGuire. Thought there was a touch, I believe, on that attack. And the officials will take a look at it. Right now with Texas leading 4-2. In case you just joined us, Baylor won the opening set. And they were very impressive in doing just that. Then they came back in one set number two. There it is. It kind of looks like a touch. See if there's clear and convincing evidence, and it'd have to be that right hand of Maddie Skinner. I think that pointer finger, I believe I see it. Is there enough to overturn? Now they're going to take a good hard look at it. That second set, by the way, there were 12 ties, seven lead changes. That's how close it was. Boy, that is tough to tell. Sometimes you can see if the, if the ball, the trajectory changes, does the spin change? I don't necessarily see either one of those. I mean, that's just so close to call here. Once again, it's got to be convincing and not so sure of that. Well, they're still taking a look at it. You know, this is just night number one, right? I mean, I in the Big 12 this year, you get the the back-to-back. The, the -back, you get some teams back-to-back, -back, other teams just once because of the extended Big 12 this year, not the traditional home and away that we've seen the Big 12 have. So we get these two teams back tomorrow. It's pink. It's pink match. Pink match. So where where the pink socks? The pink. You got the pink tie. I got the pink on. tie tonight. I always wear. I like the pink tie. Decision has been made, and it'll go to Texas.
So Texas still with the advantage. One thing that Coach McGuire of Baylor likes to talk about, he likes runs of three. How many runs of three did we see in that last set? A bunch of them. Wants to put a run of three together maybe in this set. Not allow Texas to get feeling good about themselves again. Down two sets to none. Texas. Baker Carlson on the on the back row just could is trying to want that tight rope at the net, but just too tight and then mishandles that ball in the, the second contact. McGee, no. A uh, heads up play for Bibben Bay. I mean just that's great awareness. Coach McGuire first found out about her back in 2019, but they really didn't have a place to play or for her to play at Baylor. Ended up going to the junior college. By chance, one of his former colleagues said, come to this clinic, and he saw her and said, I like this young person. Skinner. Kill number 15 tonight. What a great recruiting story for her to end up at Baylor. McGee will go back to serve. As mentioned at the top of the show, the Big 12 Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Baylor extends the advantage. That was quite Texas, Asia O'Neill this slide didn't get quite like not quite in stride but Avery Carlson trying to run through that just couldn't handle it O'Neal only nine swings tonight haven't called her name out a whole lot of time such a presence for Texas again missed a couple of games because of an ankle injury to start the season I think she has a great shot to make the Olympic team I mean she's uh, that she caliber too. of player Simpson, nice job, Skinner. Let us know at the net again. I mean, textbooks, the, the, the patience of Ibenbe. Watch this hang, hang, and then press. They work on that so much as a middle blocker. Texas still with the advantage. Simpson, a little confusion for Baylor. Simpson again, that's going to be long. Texas now leads by three. A tremendous awareness from Maddie Skinner. And look at her in the huddle, talking to her team, the leadership as well that she exudes, knowing that her team can pick it up a notch even more on their side. Molly Phillips checks back into the lineup for Texas. Simpson, Skinner. Simpson again. As she got it. That was a touch. Once again, deep into the floor, cross court. You have the most space there. If you're on that left side pin, the deepest part of the floor, then is that deep cross, and Emma Halter just couldn't get enough of it. And here is Avery Carlson, the sophomore out of Lucas, Texas. Out of high school, she was the number one player in the country. Highest ranked recruit in Baylor history. She was ranked number four when they went after her. 
And such a young Baylor squad. I mean, yeah. those seniors on this team and such a bright future, but they're thinking, hey, here and now, what a, what, exactly. what a great opportunity. A great boost for the program and this young team. That's up. That's up. McGee, they kept it alive. Briseño over. Huge point for Texas. Nice job by Bella Bergmark. The redshirt senior out of Larksburg, California, the transfer from Cal. Swindle. Point Baylor. Pull within three. And Alexis DaCosta to serve for the Bears. Texas gets the point. C.J. Elliott, the head coach for Texas, calling out where he wants Emma Halter to serve. Not a pretty play for Texas. Halter does a nice job keeping it alive. Point Texas. That violation. I'm not mistaken, this is the biggest lead Texas has had in any one of the sets, sets so far. McGee rejected. Remember I said we haven't called her name a whole lot, O'Neal? Somehow, always ends up, we start calling her name. Coaching staff calls Asia O'Neill the franchise. Texas has the lead. We're in the third set. Baylor won the first two. Back inside, Gregory Jim on the campus of the University of Texas. Baylor shocking Texas, winning the first two sets. Texas winning here in the third, 13-7. Halter to serve. Nice dive by Brasenio. Point Texas, and they extend the advantage. 4-0 run now for the Longhorns. Well, Texas with their block and their physicality, getting involved, and if they're not terminating blocking, they're getting some positive touches at the plane of the net. Oh, yeah. that was a big point. Alex says enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. McGuire calls her an energy source, sometimes a little too much. She hits about 300 in system, somewhere around 12% in transition. Texas extends the advantage. Fifteen to eight. Nice job, Halter. Oh, well done from McGee. Once again, gets that gather sub. 
and then uses the hand enough and shades towards line, finds that, that clear opening in the defense. Talking to the coaches about McGee, they told me she has a heavy arm swing. Baylor down by six. What a job by Ella Swindle, the talented freshman. Started 2023 slowly, kind of was finding her, her base here at Texas, but has really come on for the freshman. Senyo. And again right in front be Binbe. Oh, once again, Brasenio with the with the secondary set. I <laughs> mean just leaves such a good hittable ball. The Binbe whose first language is French. My first language is Pittsburgh. Put a little English thrown in there. Simpson Swindle tried to sneak one. Nice job, O'Neill. Simpson Point Texas. Now, if you're a young team, you see Texas now starting to flex their muscles, if you will. Baylor's got to maintain composure, I would think. I think it's, it's some of it's on their side. We've seen a couple attacking errors that time just wide from from Simpson. And they just had they limited those in sets number one and two came mm -hmm. out victorious. So you know you can do it if you're Baylor. You just got to buckle back in and, and, and focus and but still be aggressive, right? Like not shy away. Right. Texas increases the advantage. Sometimes in basketball we say you don't want to go turtle. Go in your shell. You got to stay aggressive. Look at it again. Timeout's going to be called. The Longhorns have extended their lead to eight. 18 to 10 here in the third. 20 to 10. Baylor still up two sets to none. O'Neill on the serve. Nice job with the dig, but Baylor gets the point. That was needed to stop the bleeding. You now we talked about Coach McGuire going on little runs of three. They need one now in a big way. Bin Bay. How many times has Wettis come up with a big shot so far tonight? And I think it, it goes back to though the court defense from Texas picking up their level of play that allows their hitters then to take rips at the ball because they extend that rally. Three time letter winner when she played at Minnesota Wettis. That'll be Point Texas. That was almost a case of hot potato there. Texas doubling up on Baylor. Nice dig. Lafatu. And then Halter. And that'll be Point Texas. 
Two points away from winning their first set of the night. for the Longhorns. Once again, in this third set, they have just continued to pick up their play at the plane of the net and then also their court defense behind. 4-0 run for the Longhorns. <laughs> Setting it up and Winnis gets the set point and Texas back in it. Texas able to hold the Baylor Bears to negative in that third set. The block came alive, now 18 blocks. Eight team blocks. And they live to see another set. That's what they wanted. The fans are getting their money's worth tonight. Wettis comes up with a set point for Texas. They win it 25 to 11. We'll head to the fourth set. Baylor leading two here at Texas. Such a fun player to watch. I mean, just with every skill that she has and the banners hang here and Gregory, a lot of them. I mean, there has been yeah. <laughs> some dominance here with, with Texas. I mean, we, we were talking about uh, with the staff last night of Texas and yesterday afternoon and again today about what they were looking forward to. They said they really got to get Baylor out of system. They want to be good with her hands and in transition. And I think that was the case in set number three for Texas. Absolutely. But if you're Baylor, you said, hey, we're up two sets to one. If you would have told me before this on the mm -hmm. road at number five, Texas, <laughs> we would take it. And so forget about that. And that's the beauty of volleyball. A clean slate. It's 0-0 zero, zero zero, here zero. heading to the fourth. Both teams have built trust in each other throughout this season. <laughs> Texas opens the scoring and you can feel newfound energy among the sellout crowd. Give credit though to the Texas faithful too. I mean, they were on their feet. They were loud in that third set. Trying to set things up again, Simpson. No, Texas jumps out to nothing. A very disciplined block from Molly Phillips, pressing that ball back into the floor. Hold her to serve again. Simpson. Nice job by Swindle. the block again and if it's not a terminal block and they're getting touches at the plane of the of the net allowing their defense to run through only one time this season Texas has been forced to go five sets that was their last match against TCU they won it 3-2 Skinner saw a big opening and took advantage of it 18 kills for Maddie Skinner. Call this a birthday ball. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> Talk about opening up a Christmas package. That was it. Simpson, though, comes up big. And the coaching staff from Texas wanting the yeah. call that they had made on Molly Phillips. Skinner's going to go over and talk to the official. Jared Elliott says it's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> A lively discussion going on. Jared doesn't like it. None of the Texas coaching staff was. And from our angle, looked like they may have had a little beef. Skinner. Nice job. He been bay. Simpson. Talk about. 
about finding an opening. Molly well, Phillips able to do it. Well, the extreme angle on that right side, that's a thumb up. I mean, she just slices that one. As Texas has that advantage, but that's extreme angle for Molly Phillips, a player that's going to go play beach after she ends her career here at Texas. And you can see that she probably has a bright future if she's able to, so. to move that wrist around like that, thumb up, thumb down, that versatility. Texas with a big lead here in the fourth. Simpson. Nice job by Akata. Swindle. Saw the opening, took advantage of it. Texas 6 1. And it's the timing. I appreciate Ellis Swindle and the timing of which she uses the center dump. Things are getting a little heated here inside. <laughs> you can tell it's been a battle in the Big 12 Conference between these two, yeah. two teams. Now Coach McGuire is going to talk to the officials. I think they wanted that same call again, this time on Swindle. Not going to get it. Texas leads by five. Point Texas. How about this for a little trivia? Kayla Akanya, her mom obviously played at BYU in Hawaii and played at Hawaii. Well, guess who also played there at the same time? Coach McGuire's wife, Jennifer, then Jen Roberts. Played with Tahana's wife at Hawaii. And the lead is five for Texas. Here is Carlson. Baylor keeps fighting back. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. And once again, I mean, it's a, it's a secondary setting. It's Brasenio leading Ali Check into that. So fluid off one foot. A difficult player to defend with her athleticism and a variety oh, yeah. of shots. Of course, her dad drafted at the age of 17 by Portland, six time NBA All Star. And Baylor gets the point. Here is Alexis DaCosta, the nursing major out of Katy, Texas. Nice job by the Bears again. <laughs> I love the celebratory that, that they have when Brasenio does <laughs> has a assist to check. And this time straddles the line. So if you're the libero, you can use your hand as long as you stay behind the, the 10 foot line to take that with your hands to set up an attacker. Good decision making by Texas to get the point. And they lead at 9-5. O'Neal back to serve. Usually when she serves from that point, we see her dad sitting right there to the right. Not here tonight, I don't think. Baylor gets the point. They pull up within three. Presenio to serve. Nice 
Nice job by Carlson. But Texas gets the point. And here is Swindle to serve. High school All-American. Holds a high school record in assists, blocks, and aces. But that's not an ace. We're in the fourth. Baylor down by three. Nice job to Costa keeping it alive. Swindle. Again. That'll go long. It'll be Texas's point. And here is Carissa Barnes. One of those kind of players that never really in the spotlight, but absolutely loves the game and has fun. Big time swing by Skinner. Point Texas. Once again, you are watching Big 12 Volleyball on FS1. We are inside of Gregory Gym on the campus of the University of Texas. Baylor and Texas. Baylor winning the first two sets. Texas won the third. And Texas coming on strong here in the fourth. And it'll be Texas's point again. Texas's block just seems to be everywhere right now at the plane of the net, getting their hands. And if they're not terminating, as I mentioned, they're, they're allowing their defense to play behind and around. 13th match for Texas this season with double-digit blocks. Nice job, McGee. Yeah, too much heat there from Elise McGee. And that's that heavy arm swing that Coach McGuire wants to see more of. Well, he saw it there for sure. Along with Jill Dorsey Hall, I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you're with us tonight. Point Texas, don't forget, immediately following this, FS1 will replay game two of the National League Championship Series with the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros. That was played in Houston. I'll give you a hint. Take Texas if you're betting. And, of course, the World Series will start Friday night on Fox. Don't want to miss that. Let me guess, you have your Rangers to pull that one out. I, you know, yeah, I'd, you I'd like to him, see right? it. Yeah, I've got to take them. Got to begin, by the way, tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific on Fox. And we're going to take a timeout. We are in the fourth set. Texas trying to knock things up. They lead by six. Including her, Lauren Briseño. And 14 digs, but involved in five assists in that secondary setter role that she has to step into at times on the back row. Countless coverages I, I can remember from Briseño oh, on the yeah. back row. She's one of the best liberos in the Big 12, no doubt. 3 0 run by Texas. McGee keeps it alive. Simpson. Swindle. O'Neal. Her fifth kill of the night. I mean, just go up and bounce the ball, Asia O'Neal. <laughs> really? 
A free ball opportunity off a, a tough serve from Akana, so give her credit from the service line. The run is 4-0. Simpson tries to stop it and does. Not able to get it through the block before they were fully pressed over. That's hard to do, but Simpson gets on it in a hurry. Riley Simpson, her dad Rick, mom Serena, both played college basketball. We see she's got some hops. O'Neal again. Nice job, McGee. Skinner. Oh, rejected. Riley Chuck sealing that net. Watch this. This is a pretty block from the Bears. Riley Check broke Baylor's NCAA tournament record for most blocks in three sets with seven. But Texas comes up with a point. Closing in on winning this fourth set. Well, you saw those hitting percentages improve in set number three for Texas. Once again here in set number four, 360 in this fourth set. How about Maddie Skinner? Fifth 20 kill match this season. Swindle tried to sneak it in. Miscommunication with Baylor. And it's 2011 Texas. And a moment for Baylor, I think, to just compose themselves and say, okay, let's let's clean up some of the things on our side of the net, even if they aren't able to come right. behind in this four set, try to pick up some momentum. Skinner again coming up big. When we talk about her ability to impact the game in every facet. She's in there as a six rotation player. That time comes up with the ace. Watch her drive this ball with a low flat floater serve. Float that doesn't spin at all. Comes at you with some good velocity. Simpson. Wettis <laughs> again. Early on this season, a lot of her shots were getting blocked. Not tonight. 4-0 scoring run now for the Longhorns. Doubling up Baylor here in the fourth. Nice job, Halter. Winnis. Looking for Simpson. O'Neal, Winnis. Nice job, Skinner. Point, Texas. Thirteen team blocks as Texas just continuing to get in front as this match has progressed in front of the Baylor Bears attackers. Although I do like that set selection because I do think that Baylor needs to get their middles involved to open up some things for their pins. But Asia O'Neal, one of the best blockers in the country, ready for oh. it. And now Skinner to serve. Two points away from tying this up at two sets apiece. Wettis, one point away. Texas has been able to put more pressure with their serve. Texas sets three and four. Well, Texas ended the third set on a scoring run. They've got a 6-0 scoring run here in the fourth. Set point for Texas. O'Neal, Swindle, Wettis, got it. And 
and we are tied. We're headed to the fifth. Your thoughts on that set by Texas? Uh, able to hold Baylor to zero in that hitting it, hitting it for instance, because their defense at the plane of the net and then also behind and then hitting at an extremely high clip. 406 in that set. Texas dominating in sets three and four with their backs against the wall. So the second match in a row for Texas to be extended to five. They were in their last match versus TCU. They ended up winning it. That's the only time they've been extended to five this season. But how big has O'Neill been since they got down 0-2? And now the crowd all standing. Texas ended that fourth set on a 7-0 scoring run. They're up 13-6 in blocks. Those stats mean nothing because we're in the fifth. Oh, a great start from Baylor right out of the gate. An in-system pass has all three options available. And then a quick tempo ball to Elise McGee. She has a hot hand in set number one for the Bears. She had the huge ace in set number two to close that. And then a kill to start off the fifth. Brisenio to serve, and that'll be long. <laughs> So we were tied up at one. This is when every mistake gets magnified, does it not? Halter. Beautiful job at the net again by the Bears. Ryan McGuire said we need our block to come alive. And what a huge one. They were able to come alive in, in oh, yeah. set number two. And that was a big time block. The Ben Bay was pressed over, extended. Set it up for O'Neal. Kill number six for Asia O'Neal. No errors for Asia O'Neal. That's huge. O'Neal's had 14 swings. Here is Skinner. Rosenio. McGee a little bit long. And wanting a touch, and I think that Ryan McGuire has got to go to the table and pull a challenge here, and he will. <laughs> so Coach McGuire will use the challenge. He gives a fist bump to Elise McGee, and I think they feel really certain that that was a touch. Coach McGuire, a very interesting guy, along with being National Coach of the Year, Big 12 Coach of the Year. He's writing a Western novel. Hasn't finished it yet, but my favorite part, he collects swords. And he has signed some of the team swords and even gave some of them pirate nicknames. How about that? Here it is again. Was it a touch? It's hard to tell. Oh. I actually think it's over the hands. I don't see enough. My favorite, though, he gave Sophia Keen, who has not played, the best name of all, Saltwater Steve. That was her pirate name. Texas's point. Skinner 
to serve. The crowd is loud again. Duenas. Four to two. And Avery, or Madison Skinner, <laughs> had a great, has a sister named Avery, who is also a very good volleyball player, but Maddie Skinner is back there serving, and she's going after zone five, because she's serving it to that zone, and Baylor's gonna switch up what they're doing now and bring Ali Check back in to see if she can be an option, but they're really trying to take away and eliminate Bibenbe from getting involved offensively, going after zone five. Way by McGee. A tremendous response from Elise McGee. She's going to go back to serve, but that was that was terminal. Watch her go up here. A ball that was tight. Everybody knew she was getting it, but has some space to work with. Uses that 6 4 length. McGee and Simpson both with 14 kills for Baylor. McGee, high risk, high reward serve. They're working on Simpson's hand, so we're going to have to wait. Got the tape back on. She comes back out. And now we are ready. Wenis, no. Halter. Wenis again. Halter again. O'Neill. Fans wanted a net. They're not going to get it, but they will cheer because they got the point. Texas coaches were not happy during play. But Texas leads five to three in the fifth. McGee's going to go out. Sophia Keene has come in. The sophomore out of the Woodlands. They call her a defensive specialist. O'Neill. Nice job. Wenis. Point Texas. Well, Connor set in on the and right back and just dug a beautiful ball. The crowd is louder than it's been all night here in Gregory. Well, Akana, the last nine matches, she's averaged five digs per match. None bigger than that one. Simpson. Golden opportunity for Texas. Wettis puts it away. Texas on a 3-0 run. And a timeout's going to be called by Baylor. Your thoughts so far here in the fifth? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Texas with their backs against the wall, I mean, just has continued to take their play to another level. I think just defensively, I think you, you have so many players on this Texas squad that are just picking up their level of play. Wenis absolutely bouncing that ball, but Bibenbe has to jump with Ella Swindle. And so that's what keeps her there. And then it opens up Jenna Wenis to have just a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So give credit to the freshman Ella Swindle who, had, who holds that block there and at the service line.
O'Neal. Simpson. Wenis. Baylor gets the point. Yeah, that went a little bit tight. And it, but if you're Baylor, you're, you're, you love that you have that, that air that gives you the oh, ball yeah. back to you because that crowd was getting so loud. But I think Baylor has to be the aggressor. We've seen a couple tip shots. It's hard to find this opening right now against this Texas defense. Wenis again coming up big. 54 touches for Wenis tonight. She has come up timely. Has continued to increase her level of play throughout this match. And again, they will switch sides. Texas leading eight to four. And as you mentioned, both outside attackers for Texas carrying a heavy, heavy share of their attempts, both with 54 attacks, Skinner and Winnis. And you will see that as matches get extended, rallies get extended. The outside pens get most of those attempts. Baylor needing a point. Simpson. And they get it. And that's an aggressive a swing. Yes. Didn't tip it over, didn't roll shot about at the 10 foot line. The aggressive swing from Simpson to use the, use the hands at the block of the block. Tip your hat to Baylor. They have done everything they needed to do tonight. And overpass. And when you go back to sets one and two in the country, Kendall, exactly. yeah, Kendall Sowers right now. I mean, and we wish Kendall the very, very best. Had a chance to chat with her yesterday. She's anxious to get back and play. She is here with the team tonight, by the way. Baylor's got it. They'll be serving, trailing by two here in the fifth. Swindle yelling out instructions to her teammates. Baylor, got to get it across, and they do. Nice job by Skinner. Carlson tracks it down. Skinner, or Swindle again, nice save. Wenis, out the point. Oh, what a huge point. Both teams had opportunities within that extended rally. Some secondary setting, leaving it up high. That was Emma Halter. Says Jenna Wenis, just take a rip at it. And she did. 19 kills from Jenna Wenis as she checks out, but some big time swings late into this match from Wenis. 22 is her high. Simpson long. Texas by four. Another timeout's going to be called. Great ball for them to set the ball back to Ali Check, who took a better tip attempt. That was their outlet, but it was more the opening on that shot. Robertsenio leads the team in digs, and the next closest person on the team coming into tonight was 80 away. Again, here's the last point. And a break in the action there because I think they were looking at Emma Halter because of that collision and just kind of shake, shaking things out a little bit. Such a key cog in the system oh. for Texas, picking up, you know, on the, the service reception and the defense on the back row. Swindle sets it up, Skinner. Eleven seven. And kill number twenty one for Maddie Skinner. What a night she has had. Throwing eighteen digs, by the way, for Skinner. And just a player, you know, you know, everybody in the gym knows she's going to get the ball, right? I mean, at critical times, and a player that continues to, to come through. 
This time she can't get it. Elise uh, McGee coming through. And those are the two players we st we started this evening talking about yeah. oh, two hours and 30 35 minutes, minutes ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, Maddie Skinner's dad, Brian, played basketball at Baylor before embarking on a 14-year NBA career. Swindle sets it up. McGee, nice dig. Skinner kept it alive. Halter gets it over. Big block out at Baylor. Loses the point to Texas. And it is 12 to 8, Texas on top. Sergio Garcia has not left. A oh, beautiful shot by Elise McGee, the junior out of Clark High School in San Antonio. That's that evidence of that gap go that Texas was trying to key on defensively had been Ben Bay. And that gap set and then a go from Elise McGee, that quick tempo to the outside, it's hard to defend. Skinner. When in doubt, go to your race. Two points away from locking up the fifth for Texas. And Skinner will be serving. Skinner with a save. Set it up for O'Neal. No, nice job, Baylor. The freshman comes through. And it is match point for the Longhorns. Skinner to serve. McGee. And Baylor stays alive. Talk about a gutty effort by the Bears. And now Elise McGee to serve for Baylor. Strong, hard serve. Wittis! It took him five, but Texas wins it. First reverse sweep for Texas since 2022 at Kansas. First, we got to tip our hat to Baylor. They played yes. a whale of a first two sets. Yeah, they, they came out here very confident, able to capture sets one and two, but with the backs against the wall, it was Texas defense, I thought, that truly excelled and led to better offensive numbers, but they're serving pass increase and some dominating fashion in sets three and four for Texas. And then just a couple better plays on the side of Texas to close out a very tight fifth set. Texas able to come out with the victory. Boy, Texas kept it close. Texas wins it in five sets tonight from Austin. Coming up next, it's a replay of game two of the 2023 American League.